Welcome back. This is going to be part two of using the Source Audio Neuro Hub. Um, and if you remember correctly, my last video ended a little bit something like this. Hey, Sean, at the beginning of this video, you were like, you can do all these crazy kinds of things. What are you going to tell us about that? Now, today we're going to be talking specifically about using multiple pedals or single Source Audio pedals with the Hub. And one of these bad boys. This, of course, is a volume pedal, but it has an expression out. And anytime you're going to be using expression, it actually requires not an instrument cable, but a TRS, which is a tip, ring, and sleeve cable. You can tell it has the two little plastic rings right there. Let's see what that looks like. Boom. Right there. This is what we're going for. And just sort of to kind of make things a little bit easier, right? Here's our, our TR. Let's focus there, but. This is our TRS cable, and here is our hub, just as a little reminder. And on the back of the hub, we have our expression in. And so one cable is gonna go right in there. And then the other end is going to go into our expression pedal, which is right up here at the top. Right up here at the top. Click. And guess what? Now that I've done that, it's connected. I can prove it because I've got it set up here on the EQ2. Up, down, up. Fancy, all right. So we're gonna be doing this a little bit differently from the last video. We're just gonna cut from here to a couple of different sound clips and then we're gonna break them down and kind of show you how to use the hub editor to create these fun kind of creative ideas. And hopefully you can get some ideas of your own. So that's what we're going to do. Now, as we talk about uh, expression, we're going to be talking about heel down and toe down. And just like for a wah, right, or if a regular volume pedal, heel down is going to be no changes or no volume. And of course, toe down is going to be max volume or max change. And then anything in the middle is, well, in the middle. The first thing that you need to know whenever you are wanting to do expression with the hub or with any of your source audio pedals that take the TRS quarter inch cable is that depending on what pedal you are using, um, it's very easy to control certain things. So for example, the LA Lady Overdrive, Kingmaker Fuzz, and the Aftershock, after, aftershock Bass Distortion. Um, the Nemesis, the Vertigo, the three modulator pedals. Um, if you scroll all the way down, you can control basically very easily all of the knob positions. 
All right, so you can see down here we have drive, output, base and clean, and treble. If I were to open up a lunar Gemini chorus, you'll notice that the exact same thing becomes possible. Right, same thing, depth, speed, mix, tone. If you bring up um, the other pedals, whatever is marked on the pedal for the knobs is what you can control. And it's really easy. Let's pull up one of my, one of my things here. Let's pull up the Fat Rat. So I just have the LA Lady and I have an El Raton, right, a rat. And then I'm controlling the drive amount and I have a minimum. So heel down is gonna be minimum and then max value, which is gonna be toe down. So we're gonna get rid of this. I'll bring this up. You can hear it kind of filter down. And just by going from minimum drive with a lot of bass and hardly any treble to a little bit more drive, hardly any bass and a lot of treble, we get two completely different sounds. Right, and that's just one pedal. I'm controlling three different knob positions, minimum and maximum, for two completely different sounds. And that works for all one series pedals. So imagine if you wanted to adjust the output, you could very easily adjust the output from here to here. And maybe you only wanted to adjust the output for like, I don't know, a boost. So let's show that real quick. You could even treat it completely as a volume pedal. If you didn't want to have a volume pedal and an expression pedal, you could completely do that. Okay, Sean, so you can only control knob values. No, that's not true, depending on the pedal. So if you are in any of the newer pedals, like the Spectrum or the Synth C4 Synth pedal, um, the Nemesis, the EQ2, all of those actually allow you to specifically choose, well, any parameter you want. So I inadvertently... Uh, reinvented shimmer reverb um, and I had had this set up um, so that on the C4 synth whenever I brought the expression pedal up I actually brought up the volume of voice 1 and voice 4 which I had for up octave and a lower octave which is kind of nice because if you want to have a lot more control over the shimmer, right, you don't have to bring it in all the way. Or if you want, sorry, watch. Um, or if you want a lot of shimmer. And, and I like it because I can, yeah. So I can also control here. So I'll show you the nemesis. I'm adjusting the mix a little bit and then the feedback so that as I bring in the octaves, right, we have more sustain. But also on the Ventress, I can scroll down and you can see that we get three slots that we can, we can select any parameter for side A or side B, um, as well as some other things. And then rather than having the knob like we see up here, we get percentages. So we can have minimum 20%, maximum 60, etc., etc. So all the way down, I only have 20%. Now it's a lot more expansive. I also have a lot more diffusion so that it's not repeating so much. So, 
um, that was something that I really enjoyed accidentally, accidentally making. Um, because I really like Shimmer, but I don't like it all the time. But I like to be able to bring it in and out. Kind of like this. So as you can see, it becomes a lot more expressive as you play with the pedal. Depending on, on how many pedals and what pedals you have plugged in, you can control not just one parameter, but you can control, you know, bare minimum three per pedal. Let's close this real quick. Close. So if I have four pedals, and I'm only using three parameters, assigning pre three parameters to change for every single preset. Well, three times four is 12. So with a single, not very difficult to put together, switch from heel to toe, I'm controlling 12 parameters, minimums and maximums. Now, you can do a lot of cool stuff to make things more expressive, or you can do what I like to call morphing. And Source Audio has been doing morphing presets since, you know, the sound blocks two days. And what you allowed you to do back then was basically morph from preset one to preset four, and preset two to preset five, and preset three to preset six. So whatever was on the front page to the back page. And you could have completely different sounds. Now, you can't really do that here. If you could if you could morph to different presets that would be really cool but if you are uh, creative you can do a lot of really cool things like um, so here I have phaser drive which I showed you a little bit earlier and let's turn all this junk on and basically if you look at the C4 synth here I have this kind of blurbly sound <laughs> And it's supposed to be kind of like a phaser, but it also kind of follows the envelope a little bit. And, I, and I'm adjusting really what, um, where the controls are, are going from. So we have LFO speed um, from really slow to a lot slower. And then I'm controlling really high mix to really low mix because as I pull up... Right, as I move that up and down from heel to toe, um, I'm getting rid of the, the phaser mix and I'm bringing up the mix on the LA lady doing a clone thing. Right, so I go down here, we have no drive right here. A little bit more bass and a little back down on the treble. Ventress there because it's a little overwhelming. So I like the idea of being able to go from one thing to a completely different thing. So if I want to do, you know, some rhythm with the phaser and then I have to go up and, and play some high lead notes, I'm not a shredder, so I'm not going to shred. Um, but you can, you can morph from one thing to another. <laughs> And then go right back. Um, because I'm also controlling the uh, the amount of feedback and mod and mix. So whenever I'm doing rhythm, right, we don't want as much ambiance messing with the sound. 
Right, so there's a little bit back there in comparison to... So you have morphing, but without changing from drastically different sounds, you can also make some really cool stuff. Um, like this preset I made, it's called Upset Stomach. It's kind of hard to explain. So what I did was, this is pretty much only playing with the Nemesis delay, and I'm changing the time, so it is not MIDI synced to a particular tempo. And I did that because I wanted to be able to control specifically what two tempos it bounced back and forth from. That way I could stay in tempo. Gotta get rid of those. And I did that because I wanted to be able to make really weird bloopery, glitchy mood sounds where it's constantly changing the volume, well not the volume, but it's constantly changing the pitch of the repeats to give you kind of cool textural pitch theorem kind of things. And we can see what I'm changing. The feedback pretty much remains the same. I'm giving a little bit more uh, when it goes to the faster tempo and I'm bringing down the mod when it goes to the, the slower, the faster tempo as well. So we're gonna move this down here so I can show you what it's gonna sound like in real effect. And the cool thing is whenever you're going in and adjusting the tempo, because you can tap in your own tempo and it'll show you specifically where it is on, on the clock, or on the knob, you can actually go in and say, ooh, I really want this tempo, go in and put the minimum and then I wanna double it or send it to triplets and, and then do it that way. It's kind of rainbow machine-y too. So I thought that was just a cool sound. Um, kind of usable, uh, certainly in recording, maybe not so much live. I think bit swap is just really cool. Um, and basically what I've got is I have a degrade lo-fi Ventress engine set up. Um, and then I've got the C4 synth to do my lo-fi machine. And so I'm bringing up the distortion, which is doing a bit crusher, sample reducer. And then I'm adjusting the frequency so that whenever it is in heel down position, we have all the frequencies available to a normal, open, low mixed guitar sound. And then whenever the bit crushing starts to come in, we want to filter out those high end because it gets really kind of gross. So we hear the, the natural guitar and all of the distortion is happening in the background. But as the heel comes up, the toe goes down. Mix comes up, more distortion comes in. And you can kind of filter in how much or how little of the of the bit crushing you want. But in addition to that, I believe we're also adjusting some things. 
Ah, yes. So engine parameter 2A and 3A, which if you are bad at counting like I am, right, we have 2A, which is going to be sample rate, and then 3A, which is going to be clean mix. So I'm basically taking out the lo-fi sample rate reduction um, with, with these two, right? A lot of distortion to a little. Because if I turn off the C4, right, the only thing that's coming through is this little bit of distortion amount right there. And then I am changing the time so that there's less versus more. And so this is in the same realm as morphing because you're changing from a non-distorted bit crush tone to a very bit crush distorted tone. But it's also something that has been there in the background the whole time. And you can get those cool artifacts in there for right when it comes in. So if you start playing with like a delay or you do uh, a hold or some kind of latching, you can get those cool textures in there, which I'm a big fan of, in case you haven't noticed. I modified my simple trim preset so that I could use the, the rate increase and intensity increase using the hub and the expression pedal. And I actually like this more than just using the switch. Because you can get that slower Leslie slowing down speed in there. as it kind of ramps up and down. And and I, I show you this because it's actually really cool that you don't have to do a whole lot and have like 30 different parameter changes um, to get these massively different sounds. Um, you only need two because I'm not messing with anything on, on the Ventress, right? It's, it's clear, no external control. Um, so I'm only adjusting two things, rate and intensity. to do very drastic things. We heard that example of the high-low funk, and it's really simple because it's just a normal kind of, well, four-pole low-pass filter that's being adjusted, um, and the only thing that I'm messing with is the depth and then bringing in the lower octave. So kind of like what we did with the controllable shimmer, um, except we're messing with the filter a little bit as well. And because I was bringing in a lower octave, I set this one up backwards so that toe down was the normal sound. Let's turn off that. And then when you bring in the low octave, you lower down. And because I was bringing in a lower octave and I wanted it to affect that lower bass a little bit, I'm bringing down the frequency a little bit so it affects that lower range. Now, of course, with toe down, it's a polyphonic patch. With heel down, not so much. Unless you want that like messy growl stuff. But you can you can switch between toe down and heel down rhythmically to kind of bounce between single notes and well, chordal patterns and stuff which I thought was really cool. And that's only controlling these three things, right? Um, the lower octave voice, the, the filter depth, so that whenever 
it's on the toe. It's not quite as quacky. Let's get over here real quick. Um, and this one's really cool because sometimes you really want to hold out a note or maybe you want to tune on your guitar or do something crazy. Um, yes, it still works. <clears throat> and basically, I'm adjusting just a couple of things. All right, the time and diffusion, as well as the pre-delay feedback on the Ventress, which if you have um, a large pre-delay or a small pre-delay is going to affect how much sustain you can really get. And I'm also controlling basically just the feedback of the, uh, oh, and the mix a little bit, of the, ve the Nemesis. So he heel down, it's just kind of like a normal patch sound. Um, a little ambient, but not too much because you don't want it to be overwhelming all the time. But whenever you put the toe down, look, mom, no hands. Um, I have the Nemesis set up so that max feedback is at unity. So with the exception of the analog engine filtering out the highs, it'll kind of just float there forever. So if I really wanted to, I can always play over it. soupy, really muddy, but we can still feel that low end just kind of sitting there. And you can kind of hear it just filtering out the top end so you can keep playing. And then you heel down and all goes away. Now, why is this important? Well, if you really wanted to, you can just move back and forth between the two. The only part about it is that once you start bringing out, the low end really falls off. And I haven't quite figured out a way to avoid that. But if you've got a keyboard player in the band or a bass player in the band, hold that. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with just a simple parameter change from one thing to another. And setting it up literally couldn't be easier. I mean, you can just create a scene with all the attached devices. And I can just go in and change whatever I want, right? Voice level, envelope, FM, depth for one and two, the octave filter, anything. And then I just choose a minimum and a maximum. Let's start with something easy. Create scene, make a new blank scene. And let's add in a Ventress. And let's say we, oh, it already knows my favorite. Look at that. Let's say we want to go from uh, a really kind of small e-dome to a massive e-dome. So what we're going to do is you have to make sure that enable external control is on and that you are on expression input. And even though you're not plugging directly into the expression input on the larger box pedals, it, it, it reads it all the same. So we're going to go with time A 20% to time B 90%. And we're just going to turn these other ones off. We're going to turn off the Nemesis real quick. 
Now we're just gonna show you what, what one change will do. Look, mom, no hands. Maybe that's too long, so you want to bring it down. Now, pre-delay is something that's really cool because you can basically turn it into a delay pedal. Uh, so let's stick with with that real quick and let's adjust our pre-delay so you can already hear that that slap back let's go all the way heel down so you get just one repeat but because I added all that delay feedback now you can hear those taps but because of high diffusion, it all just melds together. So let's bring that down. No diffusion. So you can find the right amount. So, as long as you're willing to explore, um, you can find pretty much any sound you want to make in a really simple and easy fashion by using the hub and using a bunch of different source audio pedals and, and just kind of playing with what you want to change. Even if you only have one, even if you have five, right? You can, you can control pretty much anything you want. And this is using zero MIDI, this is using zero external programming, just what comes with, I mean, not with the pedal, because this didn't come with the pedal, but how easy is that? So easy. So easy. So, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. If you uh, create something cool, drop it in the comments, uh, or post the link to your neuro preset. Um, it makes a lot of stuff really fun. So keep on exploring, uh, take this information, get creative with it, and make your own cool stuff. Do, Do it. it. Do, Do it. it now.